All right, Senator Hassan's next. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. I want to thank you and uh, the ranking member for this hearing, and a thank you and congratulations to the panel on your nominations. Uh, the chief counsel role is vitally important to the fair and efficient administration of the IRS, and public trustees oversee the finances of both the Medicare and Social Security programs, so obviously very important to all Americans. The IRS chief counsel will be responsible for helping the agency modernize its IT systems, issue guidance for taxpayers, and generally help improve the customer service experience for taxpayers. So, Ms. Rawlinson, I start with a couple of questions for you. The Inflation Reduction Act's investments in IT modernization will help better serve taxpayers as well as improve administration and implementation of our tax laws. I was really pleased to see that the IRS's strategic operating plan, released earlier this year, placed a particular emphasis on IT modernization. If confirmed, how will you, Ms. Rollison, leverage IT modernization efforts to provide a better customer service experience for the taxpayer? Thank you. Yeah, I, I was very interested and heartened to see that as well. And having been there five years ago, I yes, technology needed to be improved. Mm -hmm. I, if, if I'm lucky enough to be confirmed, I will be very interested to find out what they have been doing because I, I'm interested in the role that technology can have in helping assess what returns are, should possibly be audited. Because we know what the issues are, but how do we find them in the big par complex partnerships? How do we find those issues? And so that would be something I'd be very interested in learning more about. Well, and there are other ways that, of course, modernization can help the taxpayer experience for people who don't need to be audited yes. as well, correct? Absolutely. That's right. All right. Um, Last year, the Bipartisan Home Energy Savings Act that Senator Collins and I sponsored became law as part of the Inflation Reduction Act. It expanded tax cuts for families who make energy-efficient home upgrades, such as purchasing a heat pump or upgrading their, uh, the insulation in their windows or doors. These tax cuts will help Granite Staters lower their energy bills. Ms. Rollinson, what recommendations do you have to help increase homeowners' use of the home energy improvement tax credits? Yes, it's a, the, the bill has many, many interesting elements in it, and I know that Treasury has announced that they're through phase one of the guidance. If, if I'm confirmed, I will want to make sure that the guidance is issued quickly so that taxpayers know what they need to do in order to claim the benefits that they are entitled to that will encourage them to make these improvements that you're discussing. Thank you. Um, one more question for you, Ms. Rollinson. Um, I want to draw your attention to an issue that some of my constituents have been dealing with. When the IRS sends out mail notifications, often it is to inform a taxpayer of an action that the taxpayer needs to take. Failure to respond can result in delayed refunds or problems for their small businesses, and sometimes there's a real disconnect between what the taxpayer says they've received and what the IRS has sent out. My office has dealt with dozens of these kinds of cases, and often there's been little leniency from the IRS, even when the taxpayer did nothing wrong. Sometimes they just didn't actually get the notice that the IRS says it sent. So how would you recommend improving the mail notification system so that taxpayers who don't receive notices are not improperly penalized? Thank you. That's a, a very thoughtful question. Um, and the mail is something that that is near and dear to my heart, and I and I I do think that it is that the office of chief counsel needs to work with the IRS to understand how to make sure notices received if they're not being received through the mail, and certainly be understanding if there are in fact delays. Yeah, I I would appreciate that because these um, cases are extraordinarily frustrating for taxpayers, but they often end up being assessed penalties that are really um, significant harm, harms for them. So I just would urge you to look at it. Um, and last question uh, to both of our public trustees. Thank you both for your willingness to serve. Public trustees play an essential role in providing unbiased expertise to ensure that the public understands Medicare's solvency and financial health. The trustees work to assess and project the financial health of the Medicare program creates an essential foundation for all of us as we do our policy making. I'm very concerned about trends that drive up health care prices for Medicare, including the increase in provider consolidation that New Hampshire and other states have seen over the last decade. 
We obviously need competition, but it's disappearing in the healthcare market with fewer and fewer independent providers uh, and fewer and fewer independent hospitals. Um, consolidation and payment incentives that drive consolidation have continued or contributed to a healthcare affordability crisis for older adults. So, Dr. Newman and Mr. Kazukas, how will you incorporate your knowledge of consolidation trends in the healthcare market into your work as a public trustee? And I'll start with you, Dr. Newman. I am familiar with the issues that you're raising, and I think they're important issues. Looking at the effect of consolidation on healthcare prices is something that um, has been sort of well established in the literature. It has some effect on Medicare, but the, a larger effect is on commercial insurance people with, with um, who pay private prices. I would um, hope and look forward to working with the trustees to understand what the effect is on healthcare trends. Uh, consolidation also. Um, may have some impact on quality, and, and the evidence is a bit mixed on that. I think that's a little bit beyond the scope of the work of the public trustees, but I would want to look broadly at this issue, and thank you for raising it. Well, thank you. And Mr. Kazukas? I agree that the trustees are, are obligated to look at all the trends that uh, shape their projections and assumptions, and uh, consolidation can play a, a role in, in that as well. So I would look forward to working with the professional staff that uh, c work on the report uh, in the working group and the trustees to understand this issue and to uh, contribute to the dialogue around it as well as uh, the assumptions that they make. Thank you very much. Thanks for your indulgence, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Hassan, for asking specifically about this consolidation issue. Uh, we now have something like two million people living in maternity deserts. And that's because these big systems, several of them, and we've faced this in Baker City, Oregon recently, are saying, hey, there aren't as many babies being born and we're just going to pick up and we're facing in Baker City a hospital that has been there for 120 years plus, basically saying we're not going to do it anymore. So I want everybody to know that what Senator Hassan is talking about, and we want you to confirm, this is a very powerful emerging trend. Two million Americans living in maternity deserts. And this has enormous ramifications for economic development in rural areas. I see Senator Daines here, my colleagues. This is going to be a major emerging challenge. And thank you for yeah. bringing it up. And Mr. Chair, I would just add, it contributes to things like maternity deserts. It also clearly is contributing to a increase in prices throughout systems. So, um, you know, I, I look forward to working with you on that. And, Thank you. And we very much support both of you, Democrat and Republican, but this is the kind of emerging trend we got to get on top of.